surprised that you cannot sing during this presentation. This is not. Oh, make it fun out of this. Okay. So, French, c'est moi. That's me. And Andrew, do you know what this is? Yeah. This is Andrew, this is Joshua. That's me. Okay. Um, let us begin. So what is chronic myelogenous leukemia? Uh, it's also known as chronic myelogenous or chronic myelogenous leukemia or chronic myelogenous leukemia. It's a myelogenous variety of the disease that is um, characterized by homocytosis and on cartel growth of natural and natural pregnant sites. The normal pattern of differentiation. Okay, and it's actually caused by a balanced reciprocal transportation between two chromosomes, chromosomes uh, 22 and, and 9. And this results in the uh, formation of a gene called the BCRABL1 uh, gene. And uh, the resultant chromosome is an animal chromosome, the Philadelphia chromosome 22. All right, and the fission product uh, actually has an intermitic uh, um, calcium domain that is inherited from the parents ABL gene. But in comparison to the, uh, the parent gene, this, uh, this protein um, has an um, increased activity because it's like a tickle on the, on the gene. All right. So the activity is increased and it's not very good and it's constituted. Okay, so what is the incident? Well, uh, Chronic myelogenous leukemia, there is no there is no known familiar predisposition to the disease. And um, the only known risk factor is um, exposure to ionizing radiation. Okay, so incidence is 1.5% per 100,000 people. Uh, and it's um, determined to be 50% of all leukemias. Um, the median age of presentation for people who have been afflicted with the disease is 67 years. And um, for patients who are involved in clinical trials, um, an age of median age of um, 50 to 60 percent was reported, with a median age of 53 percent, uh, 53 years, right? Okay. And also for um, younger age has been reported for patients that were involved in bone marrow transplant, with 40 years being the median. Okay. And also is of significant importance to know that the use of tyrosine kinase inhibitors has really reduced the mortality rate of chronic myelogenous leukemia from 15% to 20%, from between 15% to 20% to 2%. Okay, what is the normal disease called? Uh, chronic myelogenous leukemia has three phases the chronic phase, the accelerated phase, also known as the intermediate phase, as well as the last phase. Okay, but the disease can take any one of two, uh, two, two causes. It can be triphasic, in other words, if the patient has the triphasic kind of CNR, it progresses, the disease progresses from the chronic phase to the accelerated phase and then to the last phase. But if it's biphasic, the patient just goes from the chronic phase to the last phase. Okay, now the chronic phase is um, symptomatic in about 40% of the patients. And it's found in the fact that the patient had diagnosis and, and is done a routine uh, blood work. Okay, and the median age of survival for this phase of chronic myelogenous leukemia is five years. Okay, and then the blood phase, uh, in an uncontrolled disease, right, so three to five years post diagnosis with chronic myelogenous leukemia can, uh, can pro it can progress from the chronic phase to directly into the blast phase, all right? With a transformation rate of three to four percent per year. Okay, the blast phase is characterized by 30 percent of blast in the peripheral blood or bone marrow for the spread of the disease beyond focal point. And the median survival of uh, three to six percent has, has um, poor prognosis and is unresponsive to chemotherapy. Because of that, this phase of chronic managers has been characterized as the most destructive phase of the disease. Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, then we have the accelerated, accelerated.
limited phase, which is also known as the intermediate phase, and has a medium um, survival of one to two years. Okay, it's defined by the presence of any of the following: 15 to 29 percent of last in the peripheral blood or bone marrow, 30 or more last plus promyocytes in the peripheral blood snake or in bone marrow, and 20 percent or more reservoirs in the peripheral blood or bone snake or in bone marrow. Platelets lower than 100 times 10 power 9, which is unrelated to therapy or cytogenic. Of the clinical features. Um, the clinical features um, typically presented by patients in the chronic phase are second, secondary to leukocytosis, and they include retinal hemorrhage, preaptism, um, second, secondary to hemorrhage, preaptism, and they have um, uh, a system erection of the penis, and that's caused by uh, secondary to hyperviscosity. Cardiovascular accident, tinnitus, confusion, and stupid. Okay, the typical hallmark for the accidental phase is the clonal evolution, which I'm going to be discussing later on in the presentation. Uh, the classical clinical features for the advanced um, phase fever, malaise, weight loss, transfers, and so on. How do you do the patient? Subcutaneous modules, lymphadenopathy, and symptoms of CNS. So what is the most common consumer abnormality as we the current problems with the is the number of conditions to also the of the problem. And like I said earlier, it's a balanced transformation between two chromosomes, between uh, 22 and, and 9. Okay, and it results in the fusion of two genes, VCR on chromosome 22 and ABL1 on chromosome 9. <laughs> and that's me trying to be Michael Jackson's son. I'm going to go back. Okay, so that's the answer. The Philadelphia chromosome, chromosome is, the, is the grandmother, all right? And the mother is the daughter to the grandmother, right? which is the BCR in the MMG. And the, the granddaughter of this chromosome is this, and the daughter of this. So do you understand? The protein is the grandmother. The gene is the mother, and the person is the grandmother. Now on the test. Okay, do all chronic virginous leukemia patients have candy abnormality? And the answer is no. Uh, but 95% of people diagnosed with chronic virginous leukemia have uh, 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 classified as age positive. But uh, a point of note is that whether or not you have a pH positive, Chronic Mangenes Leukemia, you must have the BCR ABL gene to actually have Chronic Mangenes Leukemia. Okay, so not all patients have the pH positive uh, uh, chromosome, and the chromosome, and 
5% of the patient carry PCR and APR tissue gene. Okay? And, and they present for the typical of the other features, as you said, they don't have any agents, and they're considered PH negative. In other words, these patients, they do not have the Philadelphia chromosome, but they do have the gene product, PCR, APR mutation. So is there abnormality seen in other cancers? Yes. So other diseases consider pH positive. Uh, Premise of B cell, acute lipoblastic leukemia, acute malignant leukemia, multiple myeloma, B cell non-protein leukemia. Okay, and all those this, uh, these are the abnormalities they they uh, have the shared uh, Philadelphia chromosome with chronic malignant genes leukemia. They are diagnostic features that tell them why. Okay, is karyotype evolution or chromal evolution observed in chronic genes with leukemia explain? And the answer again is yes. Okay. So although the presence of the Philadelphia chromosome has been uh, defined as the initiating uh, the cause of chronic genes leukemia, the hallmark of an advancing disease is the presence of the clonal evolution. Okay? In the past, the clonal evolution was used as a diagnostic feature of the blast phase, but now it's used as a diagnostic feature of the accelerated phase. Okay? And it's found in 20 to 40% of the patients. It's characterized by non random chromosomal abnormalities like double Philadelphia chromosome, um, trisomy 8, isochromosome. As you come to 70, trisomy is 20, trisomy is 19, 20, and 20 Q. Okay, so as the disease progresses, so does the frequency of of uh, chronic of the chronal of the evolution increasing from 30 percent to from 30 percent in the accelerated phase to 40 percent in the last phase. So what type of tests are done to make a diagnosis of chronic allergies in black cancer. One, you can take your breath up, breath up, blood, smear, and analyze it for the presence of basophilia and rhinocytosis in neutral fields and mature rhinocytes. It typically shows mucocytosis plus white blood cell count of about 100,000 microorganisms. Um, cells in neutral fields. You're going to see um, cells in the neutrophil cells from myoblast to actual neutrophils with myocytes. Um, with segmental neutrophils be dominated. You have blast of less than 2 percent. Okay. Another hallmark of chronic myelogenic leukemia is something that is called leukemia hiatus or myocyte bulge. And um, it is the predominance of myocyte over the time myocyte. So in other words, you have more there. Okay, so this is a picture representation of the problem say a patient that has chronic myelogenous leukemia. So in addition to the uh, blood smear sample, we can also do bone marrow biopsy to show granulocytic uh, uh, hyperplasia increasing particularly fibrosis and increased vascularity. You can also have immature neutrophils in the part trabecular region, mature neutrophils in the intertrabecular region. Okay, you can also do genetics. So conventional cytogenetic analysis that can be type in fish and real time PCR and use genetic analysis as the presence of, of the Philadelphia chromosome, the PCR, PPL, non G, or the, uh, the product, the, the MRI, the PCR, PPL, um, southern block was used in the past, but it's no longer used because it was time to see. Um, Western block was not really used. So, this is a picture of presentation of the collective problem of cyclone or more patient of the And this is also the presentation of the fish. Measures are used to determine whether a patient is responsible to treatment. So, you also take the peripheral blood sample 
and you analyze it to see if the white blood cell count has returned to the model. Okay, so if that has happened, that tells you the patient is actually in the lesion. So you can also use conventional cheek banding cytogenic, uh, cytogenic technique plus fish, or you can use fish by itself to investigate the number of pH positive interface in the bone marrow. Okay. You can also use a real time PCR technique to determine the ratio between the fission gene product, the fission gene, which is a BCR, ABL1 gene, to the normal housekeeping gene, which is the parent gene, uh, the ABL1, okay, in both peripheral blood smear and the bone marrow specimen. When you analyze the bone marrow um, sample, you will find no pH positive uh, metabolism. Okay? Um, partial cytogenic response is when you have um, from 1 to 35% of pH positive metabolism in the bone marrow. Okay? The minor cytogenic response is when you have between 35 to 95% of the pH positive metabolism in the bone marrow sample. So molecular response, can also, uh, so molecular response is determined by the level of the BCR ABL1 mRNA in cells. Okay, and it has two sub subcategories: can be minor molecular response or major molecular response. So, uh, so the major molecular response is when you uh, when you have mRNA, yeah? when you have the BCR ABL1 mRNA. Less than what you can test on the clean home when you, when you try to test for it. When you try to test for the presence of that gene. Right? So, you, so you say that a patient has actually achieved a um, major molecular response when the level of BCR, ABL1, MRI level is below that which can be detected by clinical test. Alright, that's what you want. Okay. So, what factors contribute to a good or poor prognosis for patients with chronic managers leukemia? Okay. So, one thing that's really important is the phase of the disease at the time of prognosis. And it has been determined that patients that have that at the chronic phase at the time of prognosis, at the time of diagnosis, have better prognosis than patients that have they were at, at, at the uh, accelerated phase or the blood phase level. Okay, and these two scoring systems 
system, they actually emphasize the importance of achieving molecular response, cytogenic response, and the prognosis of patients with chronic cancer. And then the new article, which I didn't really know how to use. I'm sorry, Dr. Tony. I hope I don't get points of it. Oh, I think you will. We'll have a vote at the end. <laughs> So basically, what, how I use this article, because I didn't know, I mean, I've never done this before. So what I decided to do was to use it to uh, back up my findings from the other article. So, so it confirms the fact that... Can you tell us what the article was about? What was the title, or uh, paraphrase what the title was about? <laughs> I think... Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, don't worry about it. But it was, it was, some, it was a research, research that was done in... About 208 patients in India. Okay. You know, because I think, because I don't know if India is still considered a developing country, but the patients who are diagnosed with chronic cancer, okay, they don't have, you know, they don't receive the kind of treatment that is received in developed countries, and as well as the fact that the disease is not like monitored aggressively because they don't have, you know, advanced So, but basically, it confirms what I said earlier on. That is that not all not all patients that have chronic myelogenous leukemia are pH positive. 95% of them are pH positive, and 5% of them are pH negative. But one thing that's important is that they must have the BCR in the L1 gene to be diagnosed as a patient with chronic myelogenous leukemia. So we don't have that. And then 